Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on anything and everything related to growing your cleaning company. If that's you and you want to grow, go to growmycleaningcompany.com. You will find everything you need to create the cleaning company you've always wanted. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you've got questions, comments, things you want me to answer live, email our producer Natalie at nat, N-A-T, at growmycleaningcompany.com or give us a call. You can chat with us, leave a voicemail, 480-648-5149. We love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. Today, we are chatting with Matt Andrews from Sparkly House Cleaning, Sparkly House Cleaning Services, uh, the Milwaukee area with contract-free, honest-to-goodness house cleaning services. If you want to reach out to Matt and his team, you can get a hold of them at www.sparkly, S-P-A-R-K-L-Y, sparklyhousecleaning.com. Matt, welcome and say hello to Cleaning Nation. Hello, hello. Thank you. Glad to have you, my friend. Um, as is our custom, I we chatted a little bit prior to the show, so I've got a little bit of the skinny. I know you've got some good stories hanging out there. Why don't I shut up for a minute and give you an opportunity to uh, tell Cleaning Nation what you are all about? Well, yeah, man. Thank you. Um, you know, I actually was working in uh, advertising um, at ad agencies for about ten years, and uh, Crystal and I met there. She is my girlfriend and business partner. And uh, then we decided, well, not only let's date, but let's leave advertising. And we spent some time in Arizona and then spent some time in California. Um, and we decided, hey, let's let's create our own business. And she had some family members who owned a few cleaning businesses. And we thought, man, we can combine our love of advertising and branding and marketing um, with our OCD ask natures and create our own little small business and have fun doing it. Man, I got to tell you, just with that framework, you I'd say you're farther ahead than most. So many people get confused and think that what they're about or what they're doing is cleaning, and that's the key to the operation, and that is so backwards. Really, you're in the business of attracting the right cli- not just clients, but the right clients and the right prospective employees. That's the key to the whole operation. Whether once you do that, you use them to build cars or clean apartment complexes or whatever it is you want to do, that's the key. So I love that you're coming at it from the right uh, direction. How did you get involved with Cleaning Nation? How did you get into our little insane universe? Well, you know, my girlfriend's uh, brother just started college uh, at Belmont University in Nashville, and we were visiting him quite recently. And Crystal said, hey, let's pass 10 hours (laughs) listening to a new podcast. And that was you. And uh, we turned it on. And fell in love, became addicted, and then here we are. I said many a time that uh, you should be warned. The podcast is my gateway drug. Once you once you start with a podcast, you're hooked, man. The first one's always free. That's what us dirty uh, dealers do. <laughs> All right, cool. So, how long have you been in business? Where you at? How do you like it so far? And I would be remiss if I didn't ask, how do you enjoy working with your girlfriend? Right, right. Well, <laughs> Not your girlfriend. Like, well, let's talk bad about her. But in, conceptually, how is it working with the the no. person that you're connected with out, you know, in in real life? Right. We won't let Crystal listen to this after the fact. Um, you know, it's been um, it's been a really great experience. Um, all of it. You know, working with her because um, we actually worked together before on a team at ad agencies prior to this. So we developed a really great dynamic um, in terms of the balance. Uh, she, I think, has, is very soft and comes in with a calm, cool, collected energy, and I can usually bring the insanity and neurosis. <laughs> nice. um, so those two meld together, um, and they have uh, for about the past year and a half for our business, which is how long we've been, um, you know, obviously in business here in Milwaukee. And our next step right now that we're looking at is how do we open a second location? You know, so we're up to around 75 to 100 jobs every week, and we want to take that next step, that next leap, um, and continue to grow our business. All right. Nice, man. Well, I am honored to be uh, play my small part, whatever that may be, in getting you to where you want to go. 
That said, how can I help you today? Oh, you know, I got to oh be honest. God. We we chatted beforehand, and I yeah. how it goes. But and I'm this is uh, Matt knows this. I'm kind of talking to uh, Clean Nation, and we just chat about you know what you know life love. I kind of get to know them, make everyone comfortable. And every single episode, all hundred and whatever we're at now, I ask, what do you want to be coached on? Just so I can a make sure it's a topic that I think is going to be good for Clean Nation, and b uh, just so I can take you know thirty seconds to get my thoughts together. I was so enamored. Matt had me just all a Twitter from how charming he was. I totally forgot to ask. So, Clean Nation, you and I at this moment are hopefully Matt doesn't suck. I have no clue what he's going to ask. So, uh, buckle up and let's see what happens. I don't have any questions, Mike. I'm how just dare you, um, sir? So, <laughs> so, kind of related to what I was just speaking about, you know, what we're trying to do is understand how can we open a second location that is not within driving distance. Um, from our current Milwaukee-based location, um, how can we not only get it off the ground and get traction, but then also mitigate risk and keep high quality and keep high reputation in both locations? And how often do we need to be back and forth? Um, we've tried a field manager for a couple of months, and um, then we've transitioned to a few lead techs in the current location. So everything from quality to training to hiring and product distribution Right now, we're trying to flesh out how to do that in a new location and using this very similar marketing techniques and tactics that we use to get Milwaukee off the ground. Um, but then, you know, ensuring that, you know, our bread and butter, our original spot, um, you know, keeps on ticking. All right. I've, I don't know that we've I've addressed that yet. So I am all in on doing that. But because it's such a big question, I think it'd be irresponsible for me to just start shouting out platitudes would it be okay and we'll have to do it kind of quick so we stay within the, the parameters of what we got would it be okay if i just instead of kind of coached for cleaning nation if i just played not played coach just coached you personally and kind of asked the questions i would ask if we were having this conversation offline absolutely okay cool because that's a tough one to answer without i i need context in so many ways so i, I want to make sure i give good coaching and without knowing more i, I could tell you a lot of information that's good, but it, I don't know that it would integrate to helping you achieve your goals. So first and foremost, and here's the big thing, you got to be honest, right? If you tell me what you think, quote unquote, the right answer is, you'll get crappy coaching. But if you're like, this is just it, whether it sounds good or not, then I can really help. What made you decide to get a second location? That's really the foundational key. Two things, um, adventure and fun. We want to make sure that we're having fun and we're on a, you know, an adventurous lifestyle as well. And then number two, honestly, is the desire for financial freedom. Okay. So let me address both. And I'm going to answer your questions either way, but I just want to make sure I, I put that context. So first of all, adventure and fun. Yeah, that can absolutely be done. Um, I don't know that that's the best way I would seek it. But again, as a coach, my job is not to judge where, what you want or if that's quote unquote right or wrong. It's just to help you get there. So that's a sort of adventure fun. There also obviously also be some stress and headache and kind of some risk and maybe some scariness involved. So that, uh, I think that box is checked. Okay. Financial freedom. And we won't do this now, but if we were coaching one-on-one, -on -one, I'd really want to dive deep and go, is that the best way to get you financial freedom? Not saying it is not saying it's not. I just don't want to do the math of, we would like to double our sales. Therefore we should double our locations out of city. That's the best way. Cause oftentimes it will not be. So we're going to go forward as if we've had those conversations and you're st that's what that's really what you want to do and you're well grounded but i would encourage you offline to have that conversation with your partner of is this the quickest easiest way to or actually get a coach if you can is this the quickest easiest way to get the goals that we want cuz a lot of times people will be like oh this sounds fun and adventure and exciting and it can be but then it harms it's actually this is the hardest way or it's going to make us go backwards on hitting our financial goals which is fine if you know that going in but you don't want to be a year in $100,000 in a second location or whatever that looks like for you and go oh would this is not hitting either of our goals I wish I could go back so not trying right. to crap on you I just truly as a coach want to make sure that you've got the foundation laid so when things get hard, you're like, nope, this is what we knew. This is part of the plan. We're okay. As opposed to crap, had I known this, we wouldn't have gone on this journey. Is that all a fair foundation to lay? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So again, if we were offline, we'd talk a lot more about that. Since we're not, we're moving on. Okay, so you want the fun and adventure. Love that. You want the financial rewards. Love that. 
what kind of systems do you have now? What does your work day look like? You know, how, how often are you physically, you or, uh, what's your, what's your girlfriend slash partner's name? Crystal. Crystal. How often are you and or Crystal face to face, belly to belly, eyeball to eyeball with any human beings related to your business? Uh, cleaners or clients or both. Any, any vendors, clients, anybody you got to be face to face with? Um, it's probably a few times a week. So we do all of our quoting online through our website. So it's not in-home estimates. And we have systems and processes in place uh, in terms of how to not only quote that person out, but then onboard them and then push them into our calendar, into our system. Um, and then also how we assign that to cleaners and what that time frame is and frequency uh, every week. So we're usually two weeks booked out with all of our assignments in terms of who we have available in some of the softwares that we use. So our cleaners then get to come in and they get to say, hey, we're, here's where I'm open, here's where I'm closed. And then we just match it up with the other calendar. Right. And then so, we have two staging calendars. Hold on, let, let me jump calendar. in. So you're telling me what you're doing that's working, which is awesome. Not that I don't want to you know, kind of congratulate you for that, but I can't. We've got a limited amount of time. And I want to make sure I give you maximum return. So what's not working? Why I get the automated piece, tell me, but we don't have to worry about that, right? If everything worked perfect, then you just go and do what you want. I want to know what's not automated because that's what we need to focus on. When are you face-to-face -face oh, yeah. eyeball? What has to happen for you to feel Crystal or I need to go talk to this employee or customer or vendor or fill in the blank? I think, I mean, kind of, they go in hand, but the two things, you know, we, we are continuing to try to improve our training processes, but I think there's gaps in that. Um, and then number two is just overall, um, finding the right people, you know, with integrity, who we can train and then keeping those people. We, uh, you know, we retain people, but at the same time, you know, it's really like a needle in the haystack in terms of finding the right kind of labor that has our values and our standards. Right, well, first of all, kudos on what you just said is key. And so many people don't get that finding the right kind of labor that lines up with our values and our standards. That's so different than what a lot of people are doing, which is the warm body syndrome in terms of this guy says he'll show up or a gal and work for the $10 and 18 cents. I'm going to pay them per hour. They're in. So I love that you're getting, it's not finding someone that says yes, it's finding the right person. So, okay. Now that I've got a bit of an idea of where you're at, it sounds like you're, you're well on your way to being automated, which helps. The answer is going to kind of, I don't want to say be boring, but it's just a really a version of what everybody needs to be doing, but on steroids. So the short answer to your question, how do I open a second location is systems. That's it. We could, that could be the whole podcast. I could just say build really good systems and you'd be unsatisfied, but I would have told the truth. So what that looks like is there's two ways to do it. You can try to create systems for the, cause the, the problem is some systems are going to be evergreen and they will work in Alaska and California and New York and whatever. They just flat out work. Other systems We'll have to change a little bit based on, well, the, the Milwaukee area kind of has this ethos or way of doing things or labor pool or um, pain for my customers. This headline works in Milwaukee, but it doesn't in San Francisco because the Milwaukee people are looking for this problem solved and the San Francisco people are looking for that problem solved. All that to say, if you're trying to create overall systems and market specific systems on the fly as you go, it's possible but a lot of that fun and excitement and adventure will be sucked out and be replaced with drudgery and frustration. So I would really encourage you to start writing down everything that you do, understanding I won't be able to do that, and you've got to create a system for it. I just had a guest on, I don't know if you heard this one, Matt, but anyone listening to this that wants a deeper dive than what we do here, or I should say deeper because it's another 20-minute format, but an adjunct one is I dealt with Neil Parkesh or Pareksh, um, and he is living in, I said Bangladesh on the show, and I can't remember where he is, but not in the United States. And he's got two or three locations in San Francisco, LA, and I think uh, San Diego. Anyway, um, that would be a good show, Matt, if you haven't heard that, Clean Nation, if you haven't heard that. But long story short, back to you specifically, Matt, is we're really going to need systems, and we're going to need automation, and we're going to need uh, probably some technology. So I like videos for my training stuff. Um, cause you said your training things aren't good. Next time you're out, anytime you're out doing something with somebody, write it down, create a FAQ, a wiki, a video, something that you can kind of put online. So when someone else asks that same question, how do I clean this? How do I deal with that customer? Instead of you having to answer that, you show them the video of you being there. Um, so you need to start creating an arsenal, a war chest of systems and processes. 
is that helping or is it too too general? I love the training video idea. I, I saw someone else doing it three months ago. I said I should do that. And then, of course, I didn't do it. Let That's me give you that because we, we deal with that a lot in my private coaching. Let me kind of make that easy for you because here's what happens. I started off saying you need a training manual, right? You want to be McDonald's where people wait in line to give them a couple hundred dollars or spend a quarter of a million dollars just for that training manual and how to use it. Um, so that's obviously very valuable in terms of here's how we attract clients. Here's how we hire. Here's how we onboard. Here's how we build our culture. Here's how we clean. Here's how we get days off. Here's how we pay people. Just everything, right? There's a thousand systems. And people get it and they love it, but then they don't do it. And they don't do it because they're overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize where do I start. It's too hard. It's got to be perfect. What font do I use? How do I... I mean, just all these insane questions. So I finally started saying, just write down what you do. Don't make, quote unquote, an employee handbook because people get freaked out and that's too much. So I just say, like, just write down what you do. Just write down. And then you can pay someone to turn that into an employee manual. But don't do it yourself because you'll get too freaked out. People still got intimidated by that. So I said, F -f just videotape what you do. <laughs> The encouragement I want to give you, Matt, is the beautiful thing about video is you can edit it. So don't just, not just you, Matt, but Clean Nation, I'm giving you permission to just write this crap down, make videos, do not worry about them being perfect. Just get a lot, just get quantity first, and then you can drill it down into quality. So the beautiful thing about video or anything you write, if it's no good, you just throw it out, right? It's not my, my first uh, business, and that's not true. My second business I bought, uh, we did construction. Part of what we did was welding, and I, I don't know anything about welding. I was asking the guy, so how do I know? What's the certification? And I was getting all up in my head about welding, and he goes, listen, when the guys weld it, if the metal sticks together, you done good. If they don't, weld it again. Like that's kind of just, which is a little simplified, but it made me realize, okay, it's not rocket science. Same thing with all these systems building. If you make it like, I need all these systems, they all need to integrate perfect. Everything's got to be awesome. You'll get stuck and move nowhere. If you're like, you know what? When I have this conversation with an employee, I'm just going to have fun with it and video it. And maybe that'll be a piece of something. Maybe it won't, but it's fine. So let me just encourage you, Matt, not to try and make it perfect or to try and be like, how do I do it exactly? Just grab your iPhone and hit record and, and see what happens. Is that helpful to kind of be like, okay, I can actually do this. It's not as scary as it sounds. Absolutely. Okay. Cause yeah, I'd rather you implement systems and be okay with, you know what? Version 1.0 is going to be awful. You look back on it two years from now and go, oh my gosh, that is so embarrassing. We even did that. How, how could I, I, I would be, I would be mortified if a customer or employee saw that, but guess what? There's no way to get to version 19.3 until you do version 1.0. So a lot of people don't do version 1.0. And three years from now, they're looking back going, I'm just in the same crappy place I was then now because I don't know. I, when we want to do something better, we don't really know the system that we're doing now to improve on. So everything's just constantly changing, but nothing's ever written down or recorded or moving forward. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm swimming in quicksand as opposed to building a foundation that I can uh, build a, a multi-million dollar, multi-city uh, operation. So again... That's what I got. We're kind of, I've talked too long, running, running short on time. Any questions about that before we hit the, the lightning round? Uh, no questions. And I think the SOPs uh, are also a necessary evil that I need to, get to work on as well related to what you're talking about. So yeah, and again, we, we've, A, not SOPs. That's so military, so boring. I would call <laughs> it the way we do crap. That is just, and I know you're like, what's the, that's funny, that's cute, but think about it. If you tell employees, here are the SOPs, memorize them and there will be a test you were going to get zero compliance. If you go, hey, here's, a, here's three videos on crap that we do around here, check them out. They will absolutely watch them. And guess what? If I say, Matt, go make your SOPs. They must be complete. They must be in order. They must be sequential. They must have a font of you know, at least eight, but no more than nine. They You're never going to do it. It's just too overwhelming. If I go, Matt, have some fun and shoot some ridiculous videos and get back to me. You're, the likelihood of you doing that is so much higher. And again, I know I'm picking at you, but it's because I don't want you to get off and be like, yeah, I guess I should build a huge operations manual and then just get overwhelmed and not do it. I'm giving you permission to go, just write some crap down. To empower your employees. Go, hey, if anything cool happens, write, do a video. We'll, we'll just start putting, we'll make a YouTube channel of, called crap, how we do crap here. Um, the sparkly way of not sucking. Whatever you want to do it, but not SOPs. No one will look at or read an SOP, but they will check out videos of us doing stupid stuff. And put in blooper rules and put in the fun things that you do that make mistakes and put it forward facing. Let your customers look at it. Look at your employees look at it. Let the vendors look at it. Look at customers that want to do business with you. Look and go, this is what I can get involved in. But I promise you, even with the customer, if you go check out our SOPs, they're very efficient. We will never forget anything. Pass. If you go, you want to check out this video of us being ridiculous last week and you'll get an idea of who you're getting, what kind of crazy people you're getting uh, yourself hooked up with. 
much, much higher chance they're going to look at that and go, hey, John, come check this thing out. you got to see this sparkly clean. These guys are out of their mind. That's the kind of relationship that you want to have. Is, am, I, am I making this more concrete or just picking at you? Sparkly, how not to suck. Yes, like this is how sparkly doesn't suck. That, that People will look at that. They will <laughs> not look at your SOPs. Um, so, yeah, if you do do SOPs, don't worry about them being good because no one will ever look at them. So you can do what you want. If you do sparkly how not to suck, it might have to not suck. So there's actually a little more pressure. All right, we've got to hit lightning round, my friend. I've been talking way too much. I want to give you the opportunity to give back to Cleaning Nation. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, don't take it personal. I like that. That's good. I, I should tell it to my customers or my uh, the people I work with because I'm always beating them up. That's great advice. What's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that maybe we can uh, we can learn from? Uh, taking it personal. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's pretty um, good. I, I would have actually <laughs> accepted that. I like that. But go ahead. Uh, well, actually, I would actually say taking it personal and letting my emotions letting my emotions run sometimes versus the big picture, the perspective and remembering that there's facts and that, you know, one of the, one of the, and one of the things I was told early on was the main, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Oh, so I need to remember what the main thing is God, and keep my eye again. on the prize. Hold on. I want to make sure I get that. The main thing, wait, say you say it again. That was so good. I don't want to miss it. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. I really like that. That's going to the show notes. All right. That's awesome. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Gosh, that's good. All right. What is one idea that Cleaning Nation can put into practice right now today before they go to bed, big or small, that would just make any improvement in their life and or their business, but immediately implementable is the key? Well, I want to steal your idea of the videos training that, you know, that doesn't suck, but uh, so that's half of it. I think the other half is just, is just the way that Crystal and I approach business. And I think that the approach is, is that we're humans and they're humans. And I think compassion is the word that I would use because compassion helps us see, you know, a client or a cleaner and attempt to see it from their point of view. So that we remember we're dealing with somebody on the other side of the phone, the email, the door um, that ultimately has their own things going on. And so if I, if I create some compassionate space for that experience and that relationship, all of a sudden it, I think, drops some of the fear, drops some of the defenses, and allows us to have a very honest uh, experience together. I like that. That's, uh, that is, yeah, you can start doing that today, Clean Nation. Just realize the pissed off customer at the end of the deal the employee that's calling in last minute, these are all just human beings that have wants and needs and feelings and emotions just like you. Really, really good, Matt. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for sharing your passion and your desire to grow. I know that you brought some value to Cleaning Nation. I've enjoyed talking with you. If you want to check out Matt's show notes page and get everything you need to grow your cleaning company, it's all at growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.